Gillian Evans, what is the most effective thing the First Minister should announce tomorrow? Oh, that's a question, isn't it? Um, you know, for me, it's all about limiting contacts with people. That's what's worked before and it will help us again at the moment. This is about increasing protective measures that we have already in existence in Scotland, but it's increasing that to some of the restrictions that just give us the, the guidance that we need to minimise the number of times we come into contact with people and how long we're in contact with them. Now, I know that's a difficult one in the run-up to a festive period in particular, but that's what will help us start to reduce the spread. That and also the rules for self-isolation, which at the moment apply to household contacts. Uh, I believe it would be useful to go further, extend that to non-household contacts. And so uh, just to, so I'm clear on this, Gillian, uh, when you're talking about non-household contacts, you're talking about people who maybe work with other people self-isolating for 10 days. That, that's essentially what you're saying there. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. And of course, that's what causes the problems and the disruption, doesn't it? Uh, where a lot of people come into contact with one another and find themselves uh, 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 being reached out to by our contact tracers. So uh, it may be possible to change that with daily, uh, with daily lateral flow testing um, and ways to try to minimise the disruption to society. But if, if what we're trying to do is to minimise uh, or to reduce the, the, the rate at which this virus is spreading, then that's one way to do it. It's, it was what we used earlier on in the pandemic and could be applied again. And, you know, it's, it's one of many measures. Uh, these, would be very, these would be tougher measures than the ones that we have at the moment. But, of course, it's a long way from uh, the worst of all which would be um, a lockdown position. Uh, Susan, we, we hear what Gillian is saying there, but this requires people to, to support it, to, to actually act on it. And given that we've been here before and people maybe thought saw a way out, thought we were nearly there, can we expect people to take that big step backwards? Well, it's incredibly disappointing. And I think there's things pointing in two directions. On the one hand, what we've seen throughout the pandemic is that people overwhelmingly have actually adhered to the advice and the rules, even in quite challenging circumstances. When people have seen that there's a big threat and that what they can do can make a difference, they've usually risen to the occasion. On the other hand, we've also seen that um, after the Don Cummings um, debacle, people's trust in government was reduced, their adherence was lower, and um, that did make a bit of a dent. And recent uh, survey data is suggesting the same thing now. So what I hope is that people will really focus on the people that they trust, which is um, medics and scientists, uh, rather than politicians, listen to what they're saying and uh, follow the advice on the basis that that's what will get us out of this pandemic as soon as possible with least cost. Gillian, what is the logic behind schools in Scotland not being closed down straight away? Because surely that's one of the, the most obvious places for transmission. It is, and we're hearing today that, that you know, decisions that that would be the last thing that we would want to touch, given the disruption to, to education and the wider effects of, of closing schools um, or starting them later on in the term. Uh, but it would be an opportunity, of course, to uh, allow people to, to protect themselves uh, before the Christmas break. Um, it allows more time for people to be boosted and protects uh, those families and those uh, who may come into contact with, with young people uh, who will have a, a very busy social week in their last week of school. But I, but I understand, I mean, I absolutely understand the wider effects that we're talking about here. This is such a delicate and careful balance. I think there are still things that we can do individually, the booster being one of them, the main one, a positive step towards protecting yourself and your community added to which we can do more about limiting our contacts and doing everything that we can. Um, and uh, and if, if we need to, of course, um, then introducing uh, tighter restrictions, which may involve education, it certainly seems to me as if this is an incremental approach to tighter restrictions to keep us safe. Susan, what is the impact of this yo-yoing in and out, depending on, on the situation in which we find ourselves, in, in terms of, I suppose, the mental health of society and, and people's attitude towards it all? Well, what we've seen is that throughout, people have wanted clear, consistent and coherent messaging. And when that hasn't happened, 
uh, when, for example, we had very muddled tier systems, when we had uh, or have politicians saying one thing and doing another, that really does undermine that trust and that adherence and demoralize people. So it's incredibly important going forward that we have very clear messages about not only what people should be doing, but also why people should be doing it. Um, and I would like to say that it's not just about individual behavior, but it's also about making places safe. And one of the key things that should be being done now is investment in vent ventilation and air filtration and air quality monitors in all schools. And indeed, other countries are doing workplaces and public spaces. And the other thing that still hasn't been done, that's absolutely necessary, is to give as the Scientific Advisory Group in Emergency has been saying for many, many months, the financial and practical support for people to be able to isolate um, when they are symptomatic or have tested positive. Because unless we can separate those people who are infected from those who are not, we're really going to be on the back foot in terms of trying to get through this um, emergency that we're now in. And, and, and Susan, very briefly, if you will, um, the booster campaign has been described as been challenging. Is it realistic? I don't know. Uh, I'm not in charge of operations. This should have been done two weeks ago, um, even more ago. But anyway, we are where we are now. Um, so absolutely right uh, to make a priority of the boosters. But don't forget, we've got millions of people in the UK who still haven't had any vaccination. And it's important not to forget about them and really to enable them to get vaccinated by doing things like paid time off to get vaccinated or if they have a couple of days feeling poorly afterwards. And Julian, finally, this is going to have an impact on the NHS more broadly. Um, how, what's going to the, the effect of that going to be? It's very likely that we will have periods when the NHS will will be overwhelmed, uh, which is why we need to do all we can to slow the, the rate of growth of the Omicron variant and do what we can to, to reduce spread simply so that we can manage. Of course, it's not just about the NHS, it's about everything in our way of life. Uh, but certainly, uh, if we want to keep our NHS going um, at there for people who need it, then we all have an onus uh, to do our bit to protect it. Gillian Evans, Susan Meakey, thank you both for joining us in Scotland tonight.